Well, hey there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for being here and welcome. I want to cover some of the books that have influenced me. A lot of you have wondered, sort of like, where do I come up with some of these ideas that I've presented over the years on this YouTube channel, you know, and other places. Uh, and it's really actually, believe it or not, it's not rocket science. You just take really ideas that you see, you know, you can tell are true based on lots of evidence you kind of put them together and you're going to lead to a result whether it's something that you want to believe in or not is not the question it's just whether it actually makes sense given our best understanding of information and data the universe how it works and it can lead you in very interesting interesting directions that's uh, sometimes very different than what we were taught and for me a lot of those ideas came from books the book today that i want to talk about is the New Paradigm by John Omira Bakris. Uh, Omira Bakris was an electrochemist. He got his PhD in uh, the UK in uh, London in 1945, and then he came to work in the US, uh, the University of Pennsylvania. He also worked in Australia and uh, ended up later at Texas A&M. Now, John Omira Bakris is really well known in the field of cold fusion because Obakris tested this on his own with his lab assistants. He was an electrochemist and cold fusion is a type of electrochemistry. Uh, you know, physics are involved, but there's chemistry involved also. Omira uh, Bakris decided to replicate the Pons and Fleischmann's experiment of 1989. The uh, two scientists from the University of Utah that got excess heat in their experiments and were pilloried and really excoriated from the scientific community shortly thereafter because it seems like it just threatens too many careers to come up with a new discovery a new idea. A lot of people have replicated cold fusion since then, but Obakris was one of the first, and he encountered the same sort of hostility at Texas A&M. Obakris did his experiments with a solution of heavy water, deuterium, and palladium, and he got evidence of tritium in the solution and tritium is what you would expect to find if there was excess heat and some sort of nuclear transmutation going on tritium being uh, just one neutron removed from heavy water which is just one neutron removed from regular h2o okay you keep adding uh, neutrons to the hydrogen atom and you end up with deuterium and then tritium uh, Obakris said that he got this result 47 times. And that really shook up the scientific establishment. Uh, there was a legal proceeding against him at Texas A&M uh, where he was accused of fraud. Science Magazine, uh, which I've been reading for 30 years, decided that uh, he had to have committed fraud because we all know cold fusion can't be real. You can't get that sort of byproduct. And they even published an article suggesting that his graduate assistant had snuck into the lab at night to plant the tritium in the experiment, uh, which was later shown to be completely false because you wouldn't get the same result if you just added tritium to the experiment. Uh, nonetheless, it didn't stop there. Uh, shortly thereafter, the faculty at Texas A&M decided in his, phys in his department, they wanted to strip him of his tenure and his professorship at the university. That's pretty extreme. So you can see what happens when you come up with a new scientific result. We'd like to believe we're past the time of uh, Galileo where you could be imprisoned for coming up with a new idea, basically that there are other planets out there and it wasn't just a fixed sort of solar system, that there was activity out there and moons around other planets, that the universe is much bigger than we had thought. You would have thought that that would have been just uh, a characteristic of the Middle Ages, but no, it still happens nowadays in universities if you come up with a result, like you can get some sort of nuclear reaction in a beaker 
that other scientists don't think are possible. You would think maybe they'd have a debate about it, uh, present the evidence, look at all the possibilities, but no, we'd rather uh, just uh, attack the person that comes up with the new result. Apparently, ideas can be that threatening. In any case, Abakris wrote this whole book. It wasn't just about his exp experience with cold fusion in Texas A&M and all the hostility he received uh, for having been uh, an experimenter, uh, a curious person about cold fusion and actually having replicated Pons and Fleischmann's results, which, by the way, uh, many other people have uh, by now, not just Bob Greenier and the MFMP, but uh, researchers in Japan, Takiaki uh, Matsumoto, uh, many uh, researchers in uh, former Soviet Union, in Russia, Alexander Parkhamov and Bogdanovich and Shishkin and many others. Uh, uh, this, these results have been replicated also by the U.S. Navy, uh, by many other sources. The point is we sort of have an understanding of how this works now. I, explained this in my other videos about ball lightning. What makes the new paradigm such an important book is he brings in, based on his experience with cold fusion, other sorts of topics like cosmology. The subtitle of the book is A Confrontation Between Physics and the Paranormal Phenomena. And he brings in all these sorts of uh, different types of research into ghosts and hauntings. Uh, remote viewing, ESP, telepathy, and many other subjects like this. I, I especially enjoyed his presentation of quantum mechanics because it really helped me in my early study of quantum mechanics of what was so uh, limiting in the Copenhagen interpretation. It was Obakris in the new paradigm here where he says, should we really uh, accept the idea that these other worlds disappear, like in the Copenhagen tradition, that you have this wave function, and, but you only have what you get in your experiment, the other descriptions of the wave function or other worlds that disappear. That's what folks believed 100 years ago in the Copenhagen tradition. Obakris wasn't buying it. He said, why are these lesser realities? It's a mathematical function describing different possibilities. Where do the other possibilities go? They all should be equally uh, real. And so he was the one that sort of led me to go in the direction looking at ideas about the multiverse and so forth. So the new paradigm for me is really a classic because he shows us, and there's a great forward by Larry Dossie, that any new scientific ideas and more importantly data and experiments can't be effectively ignored by the scientific community if it doesn't fit their agendas, their plans, their their grants, and whatever else they're doing at the time. Or, or maybe they just don't want to look at new ideas after they reach, reach a certain age. They just get kind of ossified up there. I, I can't take new ideas. No, no. So I, I, th he really points out that what physics and science are doing is just ignoring the new data. Ignore it like they did with cold fusion. Just keep ignoring it. Keep ignoring the data from remote viewing from other sort of so-called paranormal phenomena. Uh, he doesn't get into Bigfoot or UFOs in this book, but he covers a lot of other topics, uh, homeopathy, things like this, alternative medical treatments. He just covers topics where there's just been this blanket denial, an unwillingness to look at new evidence, and that's why he says we're going to need a new paradigm. And I, I agree with Apocris here. I also enjoy this book because he actually referenced my book, Opening Minds, in his section on crop circles. So that was really funny to be reading across this and come across my own name. He had read my book. This came out after Opening Minds, which I published in 2002. In any case, this isn't a perfect book. It's obviously self-published. And there are small typos here and there. There's some problems with the typesetting. It's obviously something that he put a lot of work into. But... If you do want to look at how a really top-notch scientist uh, feels about this tendency for modern science to increasingly ignore data, this sort of dark side of science that has a hostility, a real hostility to new ideas, new evidence, and new data, which Obakris experienced himself personally. Can you imagine having to go through all that in your department? just because you come up with the result that the other uh, researchers and 
people in your department don't like and they want they want to strip you of your your job there because you come up with a result that they simply can't accept that's it's ridiculous abacus did a great job in this book i really like the new paradigm and if you have some time and would uh, like to see how he handles all these topics i think it'd be it's worth your time so thanks for watching uh have a good one we'll see you next video take care for now and bye Thank you.